Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ramadan Mubarak to everybody. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu, Nasta'inuhu, Nasta'afiruhu. When I would be lahim in Sharuri and Fusina, Min Sayati Amalina, Mayadihillahu Fala Mudilla lahu, Mayud Lilhu Fala Hadiella, Wa Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Wahduhu la Sharika lahu, Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu, or Rasulu, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our own bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is Allah's servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of submission to Allah. Ya ayyuhal nas, uttaku rabbakum alladhi khalakakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalaka minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa. Uttaku Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham, inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. O oh, humanity, be mindful of your creator who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and through, uh, mate and through both uh, Allah spread countless men and women. And be mindful of Allah in whose name you appeal to one another and honor your ties of kinship. Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta'illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah and say what is right. Allah will bless your deeds for you and Allah will forgive your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah Peace and blessings be upon him has truly, truly achieved a great triumph. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana inna ka anta anta alim al hakim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasuli amri wa hlu luktata millisani yafkahu kauli. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. Uh, I pray that this month finds you uh, in utmost blessings, and inshallah, it continues to be a source of blessings as we started out. So oftentimes when we want to make a physical change in terms of our changing our physique or losing weight or adding muscles, uh, we simplistically sometimes think that we can just go to the gym, you know, lift more weights, run some more, and we'll get our desired results, as you can probably often see uh, at the beginning of New Year's. When we have New Year's resolutions, it might be to lose weight. And then <laughs> that's, that's the thing we usually do is just go uh, and just think that we can run some more, lift some more weights, and we'll we'll get our desired results. But we usually end up being quite disappointed because we start to see that why aren't why aren't we getting our desired results? Uh, you know, when when we then talk to physical trainers or fitness experts, uh, what's surprising for a lot of folks sometimes is that they'll tell you that a majority of that change that you seek, a majority of the uh, the outcome of what you what you're uh, looking for is actually not necessarily brought upon by adding on all these additional exercises and activities immediately. It first starts with your diet in the sense of that which you ingest. And so you might start to realize that uh, the hard way, you know, even after doing these workouts, if you're uh, eating just like you used to do, uh, and, you know, taking in quite an unhealthy diet or unhealthy regimen, that there's not going to be much change, if at all, um, and let alone the achieving of your desired results. So if you want to get to a certain weight, or you want to look a certain way, uh, but after, you know, just doing all these different activities um, for a month on end or months on end, and you don't see that change happening, uh, you might start to get frustrated and think that what, what else can there be? But uh, as, as mentioned, a lot of that stuff first starts with what you're already doing, not necessarily adding something that's additional. So rather, you know, as we look at this, it's not until we make the substantive changes in our diet, reducing that which is harmful, reducing that which is uh, not beneficial, increasing that which is beneficial and balancing uh, other aspects of it that we begin to then notice the substantive changes or the desired results. So similarly, as we stand on the eve of Ramadan, we look towards a month that we're often told to maximize our good deeds and our rituals, our ibadat, our 
uh, all other things that, that we can do, our supererogatory requirements, our basic requirements, and, and to make the most of this month, because it feels like sometimes it's like a, uh, a blowout discount uh, month. And if you, if you miss it, you miss it. Um, but uh, if you, you know, cash in on it, uh, there's nothing else like it. And so we want to be able to approach it in a balanced way. So what do we do? Like I said, we usually, uh, before we even try and approach it in a balanced way, we usually try and pile on as many good deeds or acts of worship as we can, um, thinking that we're going to maximize our rewards. Um, and oftentimes, just like when we go to the gym and if we have our goal just to lose weight or just to look a certain way, and all we're going to do is just do these workouts or do these different routines without changing the internal, we oftentimes uh, feel burnt out. And this happens in Ramadan too, when we do all this, these other things without making first the required adjustments, we probably get into burnout. And a week into Ramadan, we might find life catching up with us so that we might not be able to read a juz a day like we planned, or we might not be able to do all the supererogatory prayers or the nawafil prayers or all the extra things. And we might stumble to such a degree that we end up feeling like failures by the time we get to the end of Ramadan, or we're just kind of crawling and clinging towards that, that finish line. But there's a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, lifts up here. And, and I think it's, it's important to consider this, especially when we think about not just doing actions, not just doing good things, not just doing the requirements, but the psychology that goes behind him, the Prophet lifts up that many people fast during the month of Ramadan and they get nothing from their fast but hunger and thirst. And there's many people who pray late into the night in Ramadan and they get nothing from it except sleep deprivation. And so as we look into Ramadan, which is now here, alhamdulillah, we want to think what makes a successful Ramadan for us and how do we get noticeable changes and gains this Ramadan? Uh, we don't need to first look at what can we just pile on just to do it because everybody else is doing it or just because this is what sounds like it would be a good thing to do. But we first want to look at, just like an actual diet, what is our spiritual diet? What is our spiritual consumption? So similarly, when we make a fitness plan, uh, we want to first evaluate what are we eating? You know, what's, what are we ingesting in before we add on the different routines that we want to do? And similarly, when we look at our spiritual fitness plan, we want to take a look at what does our spiritual diet consist of? What are we taking in? How much are we or are we not praying? How much of the Quran are we or are we not reading? You know, how much time are we genuinely spending remembering God? How much time are we spending giving back to the community or being involved in community or giving in charity? How much time are we spending in things that might be harmful to us or things that we've become numb to, like backbiting, white lying, gossiping, or anything like that? How, how much time are we spending maybe just on, on just things that might not have really any effect on us uh, in, in the positive sense, in a sense of just binge watching TV shows or just going through different reels on Instagram or just scrolling uh, to no end on TikTok. Like, you know, how, how much are we spending time in these other avenues? And not to say that there's no benefit to some of these other things, but to say when we do it to an excess and we don't have any regulation of it, just thinking about the time that we're spending there. So I'd like for us to think as we go into Ramadan this year, not just to look at what all things we can do and what, uh, what, what things we can reap the benefits of uh, the, in terms of the additional things that we are able to do and we can you know, bring on into our regular routines. But before we do that, to first evaluate what are we even taking in? Like I said, if we are, uh, you know, maybe not really even in, in tune with our own spirituality or not really even in tune with uh, our, our comfort level with the faith and certain elements, and we just want to pile on more things, uh, we, we might not get much from it apart from just sheer exhaustion. So we want to first evaluate this, like in a fitness plan, that if there are parts of our diet that's toxic and full of unhealthy things, our physical exercise will only be so, ben so beneficial. They can only do so much. So similarly, as I mentioned, if our spiritual diet is and remains quite unhealthy, even into Ramadan, especially with unhealthy intentions, our rituals will be and will may, and may feel like starvation and steep de sleep de deprivation, sorry, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. So just like our physical needs, our, uh, that, that each of us has our own particular dietary needs, and we oftentimes have our own appropriate meal plan that's designed for us, but with some basic requirements, i.e., you know, greens, carbs, fruits, all that stuff, the spiritual diet is one that 
is simply this spiritual diet that that plan, this diet plan that I'm proposing here in a sense is not like the end all be all spiritual diet plan, but it's one that is simply a baseline for us all, but it can absolutely be customized to each of our own needs, abilities, and preferences. And for our purposes, this is just a humble recommendation and a baseline. It's something that we can all, inshallah, take something away from uh, as, as a way to kind of navigate this. So the diet plan that we look at, the spiritual diet plan that we look at, should also make us think about how much of each thing we are already taking in or ingesting, how much we aren't, um, but it's, it's, it's a basic starter in a sense of just being able to evaluate. And some of those things that I'm lifting up here for the spiritual diet plan, first of all, our prayer, our salah. The, uh, the Prophet Sallam very famously narrated that the line between uh, belief and disbelief is prayer. So just being honest with ourselves, again, we want to evaluate this from a lens of compassion. We don't want to walk away from the spiritual diet plan and be like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm completely off the mark and I'm just uh, absolutely hopeless. No, it's just like when you are making a proper fitness plan and you're maybe eating nothing but junk food, uh, there, that doesn't mean that you can't change your diet. It will be difficult in certain aspects, but that doesn't mean that you're beyond the realm of change. Similarly, if prayer is not playing a factor in your life or it's not being done, just asking ourselves, what is our relationship with prayer? Knowing what station prayer holds in our faith, apart from being a pillar, just how significant it is uh, with respect to our tradition, what is our relationship with it? Are we praying regularly? Are we not praying regularly? How do we feel when we pray? Are we just you know, going through the rituals? So not just seeing like, hey, I did this or I'm not doing it, but evaluate. What is that? What is that like? You know, do you like it? Do you not like it? You know, talk, talk to yourself a little bit. What is your relationship with the prayer? Second, apart from the prayer, the Quran, we have the verse um, of the uh, of the Quran that lifts up that it was in the month of Ramadan that the Quran was revealed as a guidance for humanity and clear messages giving guidance and distinguishing between right and wrong. And so if any one of you is present in that month, they should fast and anyone who is ill or, or, or on a journey should make up those days of fasting that God wants ease for you not hardship. And this is the only time that Ramadan is mentioned in the Quran. And it's, or, and it's very peculiar that it's mentioned alongside the Quran. So oftentimes we'll see, you know, you have the concept of Tarawih, you'll have the concept of uh, Khatam al-Quran and finishing the Quran, but just incorporating what is your relationship to the Quran on a day-to-day -day basis prior to coming into Ramadan. And so thinking about how can I incorporate the Quran into my Ramadan uh, regimen, whether that's reading a little bit a day, whether that's doing the reading the commentary, just trying to build that relationship, but assess it for yourself, seeing how often do I read the Quran? How often do I interact with it and just understand that a lot of times we will just make the connotation between Ramadan and fasting, but seeing in the Quranic context that it's actually Ramadan has a very strong uh, parallel and connection to the Quran, to revelation. And so evaluating that charity or your activity in the community, how, how, much how, how often do you give charity? How often are you involving yourself in the community? You know, Ramadan is not just a month of self-isolation and, and putting ourselves in. And I know we're coming out of a world that, that was previously quite isolated, but now getting back into the routine of interacting with other people face-to-face uh, -face, or even just uh, becoming aware of different things happening, uh, evaluating how, how active are we in, in the uh, well-being of our community and helping other people and social services, anything like that. So just evaluating that. Fasting. This is a, a crux of uh, Ramadan. This is a very strong pillar of Ramadan. Um, but we we lift up, uh, you know, fasting not just being an element just as a way to make you feel like you know you're you're just hungry all the time or just as a way to punish you. Uh, the Quran lifts up in Surah Al-Baqarah that uh, fasting was prescribed so that you may become God conscious, so that you may become mindful of Allah. Uh, it's not just to sympathize with those who are also hungry. It's not just to you know balance your diet. It's not just for uh, any of these things. It's it's a combination of all these things. It's a combination of these things, but at the forefront of it is to be mindful of God. So asking yourself, what is my relationship to fasting? Do I fast? Some of us don't like fasting. And so, you know, how, what, what informs that, you know, what, what is, what is holding us uh, with that opinion, but then also how's our relationship to fasting? Because fasting in Islam is not limited to Ramadan, you know, it's a pillar within Ramadan, but uh, as we know in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, he would fast uh, for many days prior to Ramadan, many days after, you know, you had the Sunnah fast of Monday and Thursday and many other uh, times of the year that were optional fasts or beneficial fasts. And then uh, character, 
thinking about as we're going through Ramadan, uh, we're not just going through a ritualistic month, we're going through a transformative month. And the Prophet Sallallahu lifted up that, uh, don't think I've been sent for anything but to perfect character. And when lifting up the most uh, perfect Muslim or the most perfect believer is the one who is perfect in their character. So what is our character like? Are we still harsh with people um, during Ramadan? Are we still not mindful of our tongue? Are we still hurting feelings? Thinking about how our character is before Ramadan and how it is during as well. So where, what is our evaluation with respect to our character? Have we, have we been a little bit more uh, you know, unregulated when it comes to our, our personal character? And lastly, our time management. How are we using our time? Because if Ramadan teaches us anything, it's to be mindful of our clocks and knowing when the sun sets, when the sun rises, and all these other things like we might not be in any other time of the year, but how are we managing our time? You know, how, how are we before it? Are we spending a lot of times doing uh, doing one thing and uh, at the expense of another? Are we uh, are we spending time too much time on one activity, but not another? Are we giving our family due time? Are we giving our work its due time? Are we giving our relationship with God its due time? So just thinking about the time that we are spending um, and how do we how do we evaluate that? And so before we add anything else. So these were just a few things, as I mentioned, prayer, the Quran or revelation, charity or community involvement, fasting, and your personal character, and just being able to evaluate where, where are you with these things before we start into Ramadan. And as I mentioned, before we add anything else to these, we want to first honestly evaluate how are we doing on these things? How much are we praying, fasting, etc.? How much are we not? How much are we spending time on things that might be beneficial or might not be beneficial for us? in Ramadan. And once we evaluate honestly where we are at the present, we can then authentically go forward in the future with a proper diet plan to accomplish these uh, these goals, whatever goals we might set that, hey, we want to get to a stage where we're praying regularly or we're doing something regularly. Um, so you want to achieve a certain goal, but you have to know where you're standing first. So Ramadan is the month to be uh, that is conducive to being able to do this as much as it is a adverse and tough month um you know it has that uh, that root word meaning of uh, of burning of heat so it's definitely something that's difficult in a sense and it, it brings about a change but imagine your uh, Ramadan as the month itself being your own personal fitness trainer free free of charge without the exorbitant cost um, but Ramadan is that fitness trainer that is uh, conducive to helping you get to the goals you'd like to achieve there's a hadith on Ramadan that says that when Ramadan enters uh, we, we know very famously that the gates of heaven are open, the gates of paradise are open, and the gates of hellfire are closed, and the devils are chained. Um, above all, Ramadan is a month that is there to bring us closer to Allah, to help us attain the means of uh, what we want to achieve. So think of it like in Mario Kart, it's one of those fast lanes that you can jump on and it gets you to your destination a lot quicker. Um, so it, it helps you not just bring us closer to Allah, but it helps to cleanse you of your shortcomings, burn the impurities uh, like a uh, iron is in a furnace. It, it helps burn those impurities and cleanse those impurities and helps us become mindful of Allah, not just in a way that we are uh, aware that Allah is there, but it, it prepares us in a way. And so uh, as, as uh, another part of, of this evaluation, as we mentioned, um, lifting up the remembrance of God. So in addition to prayer, Quran, charity, fasting, all these things, evaluating how often do we remember God? Because as the Quran says that verily in the hearts, uh, remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. And so thinking how, what is, what do we uh, tangibly remember God by? How often do we remember Allah? And so uh, remember that the uh, pitfall that we could all do, you know, the requirements, we can do all the fasts, we can do all the prayers and do all the rituals. But if we don't do them with a sincere intention or sincere um, presence or authenticity, it'll be like the Prophet said, and like wasted efforts. They're, they're going to be means of exhaustion. They're going to be means of deprivation, sleep uh, deprivation, hunger, uh, thirst, and all these. And so we want to center our intentions. We want to center why we are here in Ramadan and make sure that they're pure. Uh, and remember that if we can leave leave Ramadan in any of those different aspects, in any of our diet plans uh, or any of our metrics, that if we leave Ramadan making one substantive change in our lives, we will have had a successful Ramadan. And that one change can then open the door for even more positive change. Maybe we came into Ramadan not praying and we leave Ramadan 
praying. Maybe we came into Ramadan not having any relationship with the Quran, or maybe we uh, came into Ramadan not really being a charitable person or not being someone who was good to other people or not being someone who's very much even uh, solidified in their belief of God. And we leave uh, Ramadan with maybe one of these things. That marks a successful Ramadan because it then opens the door for us uh, doing all of these other things. So as I mentioned, um, maybe we were backbiting, maybe we were lying before, and now, now we don't because we recognize the harm in that. And maybe we weren't charitable before, and now we are, and maybe we weren't mindful of God, and now we are. So we would like to ask Allah, inshallah, to allow us to see this Ramadan through fully, that Allah make this month a month of healing, make this month a month of forgiveness, and make this month a month of growth and transformation for each of us. And that Allah allows us to reap the benefits of this month to see Ramadan again in this life, uh, but in, in our lives, and to also make sure that this is not a Ramadan that we can we waste, that we are mindful of each things that we do, but to make each of these changes that nevertheless can become difficult and can feel uh, burdening and can feel um, very dragging at times to be means of positive change and to be easy in, in, in their incorporation. So we ask Allah to provide this for us as we go through Ramadan. Uh, and we ask Allah to allow us to see this month again and to be with those uh, to help us get through this month, inshallah. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Inna ka anta samiul alim. Our Lord, accept this prayer from us. Our Lord, accept this prayer and accept this service from us, for thou art all hearing and all knowing. Juma Mubarak and Ramadan Mubarak to you all. I pray that this is a month of blessing for everyone. Uh, and inshallah, we, may we all be given the proper uh, spiritual fitness plan as we continue through this month. But remembering that Allah desires ease for us, not hardship. So anytime Ramadan does get hard, know that uh, Allah is there as um, our uh, trustee, as our wakil, as uh, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, as the one who we can dispose our affairs to, but the one who is compassionate and merciful. And open up your hearts to Ramadan. Inshallah, if anything is ever needed, uh, we have chaplaincy service here at uh, Muslim Space. We'd be happy to talk through any challenges that might come up because these are the, we're all in this Ramadan month together. Uh, we may be on different boats and experiencing it differently, but inshallah, uh, we're here rooting for each other and helping each other and shall get to the end. Um, so, Jazakallah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.